Hi, and welcome to Screens in Focus podcast, where we share and connect as we spotlight our favorite shows and movies. I'm Brooke. I'm Diana. And this is episode 90. Today, we're going to be talking about, guess what? Cobra Kai. Yes. Cobra Kai. Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> but before we dive into Cobra Kai. Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. <laughs> we got to do it three times. Three times, I Brooke. <laughs> I want to know, how are you doing, Diana? <laughs> I'm doing great, Brooke. I'm doing great. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's so good to see you. I know. It's so good to see you, too. We haven't recorded in, like, I don't know, what, six weeks or so? I think it's been longer. Has it been longer? Yeah. I've been so busy. I've lost track of time. Yeah, I'm sure. It's just That's just how life is these days. Yeah. Well... Did you get... Did you get new glasses? I did. <laughs> oh, yes. They're looking really cat eye right now. I, I wasn't sure about them, so. Oh, I like them. I needed I needed new ones. You look like a beauty school dropout. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped out and Brooke continued with her. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yes, we have to continue our legacy. Yeah, so. <laughs> and so, yes, we're finally back and we're still recording remotely. And one of these days, we're going to record, you know, hopefully in the same location, because that would be yes. fun. That would be so much fun. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah. I hope we get to do that. I hope that comes soon. Sooner uh, than really. later. Yeah. Yeah. I, I miss I miss being over there and hanging out with you and eating our yummy, delicious snacks. Yes. Oh, I miss our snacks so much. <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. But it's, it's good. Yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody who's listening. We've missed uh, our podcast and putting out all these uh, wonderful shows and keeping you updated. So we're back. We are. And hopefully people have been tuning into our blog. I've been uh, giving some of our recommendations on there and... Uh, just trying to keep connected. So remember to check out our website. Yes, absolutely. <gasps> oh, oh, so we had yeah. the Emmys, right? Ooh. And it was uh, on a Sunday, last Sunday. Well, last Sunday for us. Um, it'll be the Sunday before last when this podcast airs. But Shit's Creek swept the comedy categories. Like all, yeah, like all, like best actress best actor all kinds of things best show, comedy show i think the writer um it might have even been a couple of other things that's amazing now i've only seen a couple episodes of Shit's creek i and that oh, was okay. a while back got it i don't know if you've watched it or not but um i'm gonna have no, to no i'm yeah i'm going to start somebody i can't remember who told me to watch it they said it was so funny just light-hearted comedy the episodes are about 20 something minutes long so they're easy to watch there's quite a few seasons and i think it's on netflix is that correct i believe so yes i believe you can get it if it's i'm i'm almost but yes it's there if it's not there we'll we'll i'll send i'll put i'll post it on our website and say where it's at yeah, uh -huh. so I heard that it's a Canadian production, and then uh, it's like Cobra Kai, how Netflix purchases the seasons uh -huh. to uh, stream it, I guess. Yeah. So I'm excited. I cannot wait. Right now, yeah, we'll talk about what else we're all watching, but um, yeah, I'm excited. I cannot wait. Yeah, and so HBO's Watchmen won an award, and so did Succession. And oh, cool. yeah, and um, I've I've started watching both of those. I didn't I haven't I can't say I've watched a full season of either. Uh, but Regina King got best lead actress, and from what I saw of her on that, she was amazing. So that was awesome that she won. Plus, she's just such a talented actress. So yeah, and I think last year she got supporting actress. So it's nice that this year she got the best actress role. Yeah. And then I, thought, I could be wrong. And she did win something, but I'm trying to remember. Could that have been? That could have been an. I think Oscar. it was the supporting. Was it an oh, Emmy it or Oscar? Oscar? <laughs> oh, it was the Oscar. Yeah. What was that for? I wonder. I don't know. Mm. That's what I'm saying. She's in so many things. She's so good. She's incredibly good. I really like her. Yeah. I think she's. Oh, awesome. I know what she was in. I, I did watch it, but now I. It, was it Beale Street? Uh, I think she won for Beale Street. If Beale Street could talk. 
Yeah. Because she was the mother in that movie. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> oh, you're. She's going to fact check. Uh, yeah, if Beale Street could talk. Okay. All I know is good. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so Regina King, yeah, won the Oscar for If Beale Street Could Talk. So that's awesome. But your girl. My girl. <laughs> my girl. Zendaya <laughs> won her first Emmy for Best Lead Actress in Euphoria. I just love her. She is good. She's so yeah. good. Oh, my gosh. I just love her. Gemma, was, Gemma watched a movie with her in it just the other day, like a couple weekends ago. And oh, I was just like, oh my gosh, Zendaya, she's so cute. Like, I just love her personality because she could play, you know, she's pretty versatile. I'm, I'm very happy for her because that, that movie or that show, uh, Euphoria, that's, that's tough to watch. It is. It is tough to watch. So yeah, I thought it was very well deserved. She did a phenomenal job. Awesome. And then Mark Ruffalo won Best Lead Actor in a limited series for I Know This Much Is True, which is... You watched that. Yes, I saw that. And I thought it is a slower paced uh, uh, series, but I knew that he could win because he was so good, so good, because he plays twins. And... uh, you know, and it's about mental illness and just all kinds of things. So it, it was a good movie. So I'm glad. I was glad to see the people that won. Yeah. Win. So it was yes. good. Oh, cool. Well, thank you for uh, sharing the Emmys news with us. Well, you're so welcome. And just so our listeners who are Walking Dead fans like us, um, you know, we're going to pick up next podcast with our walking dead but just so that people know that walking dead came out with um with that they're ending the series with season 11 but yeah but we're getting extra episodes i think there's gonna be 24 24 26 uh more episodes um and it's normally 16 so uh we're getting some bonus ones there and then there'll be a new spinoff with carol and daryl wow i can't believe it i know i just never knew when this day would come i never pictured it i know i texted you (laughs) and remember you remember your reaction yeah and then diana was like oh wait hold on don't even get me started i know exactly (laughs) i was trying to be optimistic i was like what it's ending but then i'm like okay i can look on the bright side there's going to be some movies there's going to be the other shows the other spinoffs there's we're going to get some more there's going to be carol and daryl there's going to be all these things you know so i was trying to breathe not me. I, me, I, I was like, <laughs> I was all suffocating. No. Yeah. So we'll be Aww. back with those starting next podcast. So we're excited. We're excited. We're excited to be back. We're excited to talk about Cobra Kai this uh, episode. And Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Brooke, do you want to know yeah. the results of our poll? Yes, I have been waiting. So, I like so eager. I just because there are those were so many good movies. I uh, Diana, you had done the um, list. What is it called? The, the list. list. Yes, yeah. thank you, Emma. What is it called? And so <laughs> yes, it was incredible. There were so many good movies on there. I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna be hard if I could only choose one. So thankfully, you know, we could choose as many as we needed to. Well, I said three, but. Oh, I might have done like five. <laughs> okay. I missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say one, our poll was, what is your favorite movie fight scene? And I even had trouble. I had to like knock things off my list too, right? I'm like, oh, wh- where am I going to put the cutoff? But, you know, there really is a lot. There's so many to choose from. And I had people respond uh, you know, when I sent it out, because I put it on Facebook, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> the razor blade for your face, <laughs> Facebook, I, I put it on Facebook and Zip. Twitter. 
and I sent it out to our subscribers. And so, um, but anyways, I did get feedback like, this is hard. How do we pick? Um, even my family, you know, that I told, you know, what's your favorite? So it is hard to pick. But I will now reveal the runner up in third place. It was a four way tie. Wow. Kill Bill, Avengers Endgame, Terminator Judgment Day, and Rocky movies. Dang. Yeah. Those are all so good. I know. I love them all. Yeah. It's like check, 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 check. Yep. Yeah. Love them all. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just thinking of so many more fight movies. I oh, that's crazy. Crazy. The list goes on. <laughs> In second place. Yes. Gladiator. Wow. Russell Crowe. Yeah. Awesome. And um, Joaquin Phoenix. What? Thank you. I'm all... <laughs> your guy. Your guy. <laughs> Zendaya is your girl. And Joaquin Phoenix, Joaquin is, Phoenix your is your guy. guy. Yes. He is my uh, screensaver on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so drum roll, please. And first place is John Wick movies. Woo! Ah! Woo! Woo! <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, has to be. Yeah. So it's so funny. As I was making this list, I was watching all the fights on YouTube. Like I was watching Jackie Chan fights and Bruce Lee fights and um, uh, movies I haven't seen before. I rewatched Kill Bill. Um, there were a couple different fights um, with Uma Thurman. And then I watched Keanu Reeves with the knives. And I'm like, okay, what's so cool about Keanu Reeves is that... It's so good. It's so graphic. But it's funny, too. Like, he made me laugh. And it's not, I mean, it's not supposed to be funny like he's not laughing, haha. But it's funny because he kept throwing the knives and then everybody's like half dead and he picks up another thing and wields it. So it was just, it was very amusing at the same time. So it's, it's great. It was great. I, yes. I love John Wick movies, so. Yeah, he's he's awesome. So I, I hope number four comes out soon. Oh, that and I nice. watched I watched Speed recently, too. Oh, I love Speed. Yeah, it was fun to watch that. I hadn't seen that in ages, ages. When is Bill and Ted released? It released. It's have been, you watched it? No, because you have to pay. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of, you know, it's like at the theater, so you have to pay <laughs> the additional money to watch it. It's at the theaters? Uh, whatever theaters that might have it. Yes, it's at the theaters, but you can watch oh. it at home. I think it's at the theaters, but anyways, you can watch it at home, but you have to pay because it's not oh, it's okay. not just at um, you know, it's not on one of our streaming places where we get to f- get it for free. Oh, I see cuz yeah, we did that with another movie and at first I'm like, "Oh, you have to pay for it even though we subscribe to the streaming service." Yes. And then I didn't understand and uh so they're still trying to make their money too, but so yeah, we we ordered one, but um probably we'll order Bill and Ted then if that's if it's released now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's released. You can find it. That's cool. It'll be like, so uh, yeah, with the other movie we streamed that we had to pay for, like we're going to the theater, I made popcorn. I made sure that we had the desserts and treats, whatever goodness that we wanted and yeah. made it like, like, like as good of an event as possible. Well, and the problem with, with me doing that is that it would have just been me sitting there and I just didn't want to, you know, do it for myself. But I can see with you and your whole family, like if I had the whole family say, oh, we all want to watch this, then I would have gladly paid the oh. money and done done it like you did. So, yeah. Um, well, I wonder if it just, if it's downloaded in the streaming app, you know? Like, like so say for instance, it's Amazon Prime and uh, you could buy it. Maybe you could buy it and then it'll be in your Amazon Prime reserve. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I have to look into that. Yeah. And maybe some of our viewers would uh, be interested in look, you know. It it got good reviews. It got decent oh. reviews. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I saw the trailer. I was like, wow, this is pretty hilarious. Yeah. Ha ha. I do want to watch it. I do yeah. want to. I will yeah. eventually. 
Perfect. Well, we'll have to do a podcast on it. Yep. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, thank you for your um, uh, survey, Diana, or your poll. I was very excited to uh, see all those amazing fight scene movies on the list. So, John Wick, Keanu Reeves, we love you. Yep. <laughs> so, we're now at our question of the day. Since we're talking about all these cool fight movies, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Did you see Chris Evans' nudes <laughs> that were leaked? Ah. <laughs> uh. I thought you were going to ask me about fight movies and I'm all waiting. I thought I would throw that in as a little twist. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. I unfortunately did not get to see the picture. So. <laughs> I heard about it. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't know what the pictures were of originally. I just knew they were personal pictures that he yeah. ha- he posted and had to retract. It wasn't until later that I found out what kind of pictures he had. So I was like, hmm, Chris, you're taking these, who are you taking these pictures for? Exactly. So even if you didn't want to release them, why are they on your phone? So it was very interesting. Did you see them or you heard about oh, them? Oh, gosh. What? As soon as I saw the headline, Chris Evans nudes, you know, I was like, I got to see this, man. Like, <laughs> I was on it. I was on it. I was like, was it on Instagram or where was it? I don't know where he released it to. I just had to keep scrolling until I found the evidence. And the uh, evidence. (laughs) (laughs) True crime, true detective. I was like, please, somebody share this beautiful photo. So anyways, yes, uh, all of you out there who are now listening to me go on about Chris Evans' manhood, I had to find out what was going on. Yes. And for the better good, right? Yes, you had to, right? Because you had to report back on this podcast, which is extremely important. You had to do your research. Yes. And so uh, for all of you interested or who have not seen it, I'm sure a lot of us have seen it. But uh, you could find it on Twitter. (laughs) Thank you. Very easily. Very easily. Yeah, poor guy. But I really like his statement. Um and he was really cute about it, you know, and I still think uh, accidents happen, but I'm just not sure how much of this was a real accident. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it was the last picture on your, th- you know, on your, you know, your oh my uh, gosh. on your photos, it, you know. I mean, like, I could understand how maybe he could have forgotten that it was there, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, no. That just doesn't happen anymore. I don't know. Like, unless somebody got your hard drive, I just... Exactly. All I know is I'm thankful that he did that. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Thank you, Chris Evans. Yes, we love you. Um, But that wasn't the actual question of the day. I just thought I'd throw that that in um, (laughs) for for a loop for you there. Yeah. But uh, now you know where to find it. And the real question of the day is... What is one of your favorite fight scenes that you have ever seen, either in a motion picture or a TV show? Okay, so what's very interesting is the first thing that came to mind was Billy Jack. Oh, who's that? So I think I might have told you about this before. I don't remember. Billy Jack is a man. Uh, I believe he's a Vietnam veteran and he's, uh, you know, half Native American and he... I, this is in the 70s, right? These movies. And uh, he comes to this, some small town, but he's always helping out the local, um, well, I guess like the local hippies and Native Americans or, you know, oh. people that are less fortunate or whatever it is. And it's, uh-huh. he's always battling for them. And the and what's what I love about his fighting was, because uh, I was a kid watching these, right? I wasn't uh, an adult yet. It was just great watching these movies. He would uh, fight against the corrupt law, you know, sheriff or, oh, or, yeah. or or a group of bad guys or whatever it is. And he was always defending either women or 
or a group of people um, that couldn't fend for themselves somehow. But what I loved about him, because he would use his feet to fight in martial arts. Oh, okay. And uh, when you knew he was going to fight, because he was just so, everything was so slow. He was so calm. But he would, he wore his little hat and he would, I, th I think he would take off his hat and he would take off his boots. And you knew when he took off those boots, what he was going to do. And it was so cool. I remember this one scene when um, all these guys come out from behind different trees, like one by one. And there's like quite a few guys, like in the team, like 12 guys or something. And he has to fight them all. So it's kind of like our Cobra Kai, right? It's like oh, having wow. to fight all these people. But he has to fight them all. And, and so there's like maybe three or four movies um, in the Billy Jack series. And so... When I thought about this, that's what I thought about. Because I thought, oh, man, he was just so cool. And I love what he stood for. And um, they were just great movies. And they just remind me of my childhood. So those are the oh, movies that cool. came. Those are the movies that came to mind. But I would say, other than what one on our list, because I, I, too, picked John Wick, because I really do love those fight scenes. But I had also picked Rocky. Yeah. Uh, because I love the Rocky movies. And I just actually watched... Uh, one of them over the weekend but i also picked karate kid because i love it i mean that's that's the appeal to me with cobra kai so um those are the movies that come to mind as my best fight scenes oh that's awesome that's good diana and i love that you brought your childhood into the um fight movies too you know yeah so that's just like me, you know, my childhood uh, fight scene movies would be Bruce Lee yes. uh, in all of the movies because we watched them all. And then um, Arnold What's Schwarzen your favorite? What's your favorite Bruce Lee movie? Uh, it Do would you know? be The Fist of Fury. Uh-huh. Yeah, I that one is really good. Go ahead. No, I, I thought, I, I know I put a Bruce Lee movie on our list, and right now, I, I think I had Fist of Fury, and I might have changed it to the one where he fought with... Uh, Chuck Norris. Uh, Chuck Norris, because I just wanted to put that in there, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. That movie we owned, so I watched that a lot, and I thought of that movie specifically, but I do like the Fist of Fury, because um, it, it was just the way that it was choreographed, and like the that yellow jumpsuit that he was wearing with the... I think the basketball player's name is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, uh-huh. Yes. This basketball player had like the longest legs, uh, longest arms, and he reminded me of uh, a character in Street Fighter, the video game. Um, so anyway, I love the Bruce Lee fight movies. Fist of Fury is on the top of my list. Um, I, also, I love all of Bruce Lee movies, so I, I mean, it's hard to pick, but that is my go-to. And then my second... Uh, childhood like would be Arnold Schwarzenegger um, Terminator 2 yeah when he's like fighting the T-1000 in that uh, warehouse when they're like m melting and yes. totally falling apart and the music and and with Bruce Lee it's the sound effects too you know that I really liked and then I also really love the uh, Kill Bill movies they're yeah. great yeah she had a she she was a badass. She was. So I'm very thankful for that movie. But then, um, you know, when we uh, started uh, recording tonight, I did want to tell you that I loved the... I love so many. It's too... It's really hard. But I really like the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at the end with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Because yes. Of, you know, Brad Pitt, he had some really good moves because he was a stuntman. Uh, and that was his profession. And then Leonardo DiCaprio was the actor that uh, Brad Pitt was his stuntman, right? Yeah. Or I think he was his stuntman. Yes. And anyway, so Leonardo DiCaprio just runs and gets the flamethrower. I just love that ending of that movie. It was hilarious. Yes. It was good. Quentin Tarantino has a really, um, he's got good, uh, a good eye for, for that dark comedy. Yes, he does. He totally does. Yeah, he's so he's a, good at it. He's a genius when it comes to that. <laughs> Those are great movies. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. Now I just want to go and watch Bruce Lee all weekend long. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. That sounds yeah. like fun. We haven't done that because we've done like, we just did another Van Damme marathon, which we just did like three months ago. 
So we just watched more Van Damme, and I love all his Van all his movies too. Right. But, um, we need to do a Bruce Lee marathon. That's that's for sure. I I thought about buying the Billy Jack m- movies too, just so I could oh, watch them should. again. Yeah. Well, those are great movies. I'm so glad you shared them with me, Brooke. And uh, But we also want to know what our listeners think. Please let us know what is your favorite fight scene in a movie. You can leave us a comment on Twitter at in underscore screens or on our Screens in Focus Facebook page. You can follow us on our Instagram, subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. The link is in our show notes. Awesome. So before we dive into Cobra Kai 1 and 2, and yes, there are spoilers ahead, We want to acknowledge that this TV series is based on the Karate Kid film series of the 80s. So, Brooke, I would like to know, what are your overall thoughts of the original movie? And what are your thoughts on revisiting this story 30 years later with Cobra Kai? Oh, that's a great question. Um, So at first, I was really excited to see the show. Karate Kid was just a big part of my my life growing up. I mean, a lot of the the music, um, the the script, the action. We all brought that into real life up till now, and we still do it now. And you know, it's one of those movies that I will always rewatch. So when I found out that they were making a new series, I just tell you, I couldn't wait. I was so excited. And then I found out that it was on YouTube subscription and I decided that I would wait to see it. But then you, Diana, told me about <laughs> it. So ever since then, I'm still a YouTube subscriber. <laughs> um, we watched it as a family, even with the young children. We binged it for the first two seasons because we were behind the two seasons. So we watched it within just a few days, maybe even like three or four days. It was quick. Um, and one of those weekends where we just laid around watching it all night long, show after show. And I tell you, it was just the best experience and we can still have the greatest memories to go along with the franchise of Karate Kid. So I'm just so happy that they reintroduced it to, um, you know, this generation. And before a certain age, my, my youngest kids didn't even know what Karate Kid, they hadn't even seen it. So <clears throat> I'm glad that we were able to, uh, so now they, they love it. They've, the kids just watched uh, all the original Karate Kid just before we rewatched Cobra Kai. So they just watched all Karate Kid recently all over again. And I just love that, you know, this is a part of our, our family dynamic, our lives. So I, I love the franchise greatly. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Miyagi. I mean, yeah, all of it. So tell me what your thoughts were. I mean, how did this impact you? Well, I too had watched the Karate Kid movies back in the day. Huge fan. I watched the sequels, the remakes. But of course, the first is my my ultimate favorite. And um, I watched it repeatedly you know, through the years. And I love the relationship between Daniel LaRusso and Mr. Miyagi. You know, he's a teen without a father, being mentored by a wise older man. But more than that, it it's about friendship, a true friendship. Of course, the backdrop being that um, Daniel is bullied and beat up by Johnny Lawrence and his Cobra Kai pals. And Mr. Miyagi comes to rescue Uh, comes to the rescue and begins to train him in karate for the All-Valley Tournament. And, of course, along the way, uh, Daniel also begins a relationship with Allie, who was Johnny Lawrence's girlfriend, played by Elizabeth Shue. So the original movie had the perfect combination of elements, friendship, love, bullying, martial arts, and prevailing goodness, along with good characters and music. And... I think the show has that too, except for that the show is even more comedic than the movies. And I think that it works. It really works. And I too believe it's great because it's introduced to a new generation and I'm so happy that it is. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I had heard about it because I had seen a, I had listened to a podcast uh, of an interview 
with uh, Sholo Maraduena, who plays Miguel. And so I tuned into YouTube Red, and this was like in 2018, and I fell in love with the show. And then I had to wait till the second season, which was in 2019. And then when it came out, you know, I binged, I was binge watching it, but that's when I got the rest of my family involved. I'm like, you guys have to watch this. And they watched it, and then they fell in love with it. And so, you know, we're just all fans of the show. So, you know, I love it because it does. It brings your family together, right? Because you can um, appreciate so many things. I love that, you know, they have people, you know, Daniel and um, Johnny who are older now, right? Because they're 30 years older than they were. And then they have, they're teaching teens. So you get a teen's perspective. So, you know, they've both experienced bullying and you see what it has done to an adult and you see what, you know, it can do to teens. So it's, I, I just think it's so important because it can bring families together and for everyone to talk about. Yeah. You know, bullying and showing, you know, about honor and um, friendship and just all kinds of things. So I cannot wait for season three in 2021. Me either. And I was so mixed up because I didn't realize that uh, season three wasn't released. I, I just assumed that when it was going out on Netflix, Netflix, that season three would be there. And then I found it out and like once season two was done or when we, cause we just rewatched it. And uh, when season two ended for us the second time, I was like, okay, season three tomorrow. And then they're <laughs> like, oh no, it's not released yet. October. Well, I thought it was this year. And then they're like, oh, 2021. I was like, what? <laughs> I turned into a dragon. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you should see Brooke's face. That is so funny. <laughs> I was so like, it was one of those things where it like kept me up. You know, I was like, oh, I was like fidgety because of the, I was so irritated. You know, you are not alone. My niece, um, I touched base with her uh, recently, and she said the same thing. She was so mad. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I thought it was there was season three was out. What are they doing? Because she thought that's why it was, on, you know, a big yeah. thing on, you know, Netflix and this and that. And she said, I thought it was going to come on. And I'm like, no, it's just the first two. Because, you know, it wasn't on Netflix. Now it is on Netflix. So people that haven't seen it are watching it. And as we discussed prior to recording, that it's doing super well on Netflix. It has a huge following and it's doing very, very well. So I'm excited for them. I'm excited. So I think it's awesome. Me too. Oh, I love the show. Okay, so let's dig into Cobra Kai. So we're going to break this up by, uh, we're going to talk about season one, episodes one through five, and then I'll uh, give highlights of six through 10, and then we'll go into season two and do the same thing. So Brooke, go ahead. Tell me about uh, what your thoughts are on season one, episodes one through five. Yes. So we saw the match between Johnny and Daniel at the competition way back in high school. And I just felt so excited for the show to start out this way. It got us very pumped and ready. Like it was just, I was interested to see how their lives have turned out. Johnny waking up with an open beer on his nightstand. <laughs> and then Daniel, you know, a really successful auto dealership owner Daniel, he really seems to have made it in life success-wise, and he's very happy, he's wealthy, he has a beautiful family, they're very fortunate. Daniel's son was the less physically active child uh, of the two, and his daughter ended up being the prodigy where she's uh, learned his techniques uh, through in right. karate. Um and so then we see Johnny, he has a son who's distant. And I just felt really bad about that. Uh, but then when Johnny meets Miguel and then he saved him from those bullies at the mini mart with that homeless lady who ate Johnny's pizza off the ground. <laughs> I just, at that point I was like, okay, I knew exactly where this is going. He becomes Miguel's sensei, Johnny, you know, he just has a way of talking and, and he's really rude and he's very direct. 
And, you know, he's also behind on times because the guy can't even use the internet, nor does he even own the cell phone. <laughs> It's so cute. And he still has the same car from the high school. That red, uh, was it a Firebird? His, his car. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. I love all of that that you just uh, brought up and talked about. You know, the way he talks rude and direct, like you said, he totally is. But why is it still endearing? Like, why? What is it about him? I, I mean, it just goes to show you that he's a really good actor, that he can do that, right? That he can just be so kind of callous and just the way he talks. And he's so politically incorrect. And it's like, oh, my God, you can't say that. You're not supposed to say that. And then with the, you know, the Internet and the computers and the laptop, he doesn't know how to work. Facebook, and then he tells Aisha, oh, uh, put a hash brown on it. Do hash brown Cobra Kai and send it to the internet. He's so and cute. I, was, I love him. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, he, he's, he just, he warms my heart, even though he is the way that he is. But I think I've seen an interview with him, and like, his demeanor is very the same. It's just like, he may not be as rude in real life, but the way that he presents himself, just laid back, cool guy, um, that seems like very natural. And I think that's why he did like, that's why we just, we love Johnny, you know? I mean, he's, yeah. he's not this, he's different than high school. High school, like when we watched, rewatched Karate Kid, I was like, wow, He's so high strung, such a jerk. Like he just took the radio from Ali and broke it. And then, and then I love when he would like do the flashback story about why yes. Daniel LaRusso and him don't get along as if Daniel LaRusso yes. is the bully and he was, you know, and so yeah, yeah he was twist the story a little bit, but Daniel's daughter was involved in an accident that totaled Johnny's car, that red mm -hmm. firebird from high school. And I was actually thankful for the incident only because Daniel seemed really oblivious and, and like, I mean, he's a hard worker. His wife uh, also works at the business. So they just, they have like this perfect tone. And the fact that their daughter got into that car accident just kind of, brought reality into the, inside that fantasy that I was seeing yes. at first. So I appreciated uh -huh. that they threw that in there. And then, um, uh, you know, I, I actually was very happy that Daniel was very open to fixing the car, even though he had no idea about what happened with his daughter. I just thought that these grown men having to face each other again after all this time was like, I was like, like, you know, like my, my teeth were gritting. Like, I just wanted to know like, Oh my gosh, how's this going to go down? And, yeah. um, I thought that it couldn't have gone down any better. I mean, he threw the bonsai on the ground, you know, so he, they definitely haven't forgiven each other. Well, Johnny for sure at that point hadn't forgiven Daniel, uh, from, from the high school, from the, the tournament. And then yeah. Daniel was feeling pretty good about himself. So, um, it's just interesting how the tables have turned because Johnny grew up, uh, wealthy and, um, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how they were able to switch. So then Johnny lives in Reseda, Daniel lives in, uh, in the uppity area where Johnny grew up. So it's just, it's just interesting how the tables turned like that. Yeah. That is, that is interesting. I hadn't thought about it. So that's a great point. Yeah. Um, I, I do love how they show and use the flashbacks of certain moments in the movie that play a part of the story so that, you know, people who haven't seen Karate Kid get some insight. And for those who are familiar with it, you get to revisit those times. And it's so much fun. I love when they do that, when they pay tribute to, um, a movie or something else that's really important or relevant. Um, like Daniel using the bonsai trees with his dealership in his commercials. Yeah. And the logo of Cobra Kai, you know, it's the same logo. And then having Allie's picture at the school posted and um, Johnny, um, you know, having Miguel wear that Halloween costume. I mean, that skeleton, I mean, that's so... I, that's so ingrained in my brain, you know, yeah. as being the guys as bullies toward Daniel. I love it. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then Johnny's old training gear, you know, the outfit that he would wear. 
Um, and also Daniel visiting Mr. Miyagi and paying tribute. I really love that because I love that relationship. It's so important. And I love that they honor that relationship between Daniel and Mr. Miyagi. Oh, and yeah. so it just makes my heart warm. It really does. I just love it so much. Um, I, I too, uh, appreciate the expansion of Johnny's character because, again, we only knew him as the bad guy. And here you see that, yes, he's made mistakes, but he isn't a bad guy. He, you know, he has a heart. And I love that they are exploring that. Yes. Oh, and I love the music. Love it. Yes. It's so, it's, it's so 80s because Johnny's stuck in the 80s, right? The car, the beer. He drinks the Coors uh, beer, um, uh, the music, uh, just everything. It's like he's stuck in that time, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Going into a mini mart. <laughs> yes. It's pretty cute. I, I love the show. I love that. Yeah. What did you notice in episodes 6 through 10? So we get to see Johnny's backstory as a kid. So, you know, even younger than what it was in the movies, we see how he grew up and the father figures he had and his stepfather, you know, wasn't very nice. And then, of course, he had Crease as his sensei. But we do get to see through these episodes the shift and the growth in him as he emerges as a sensei of his own dojo. And, you know, he trains his kids and um, and he has to fight. Uh, against the Cobra Kai ban at the All Valley Tournament. So um, he, he finally gets the green light, which is the same night that Miguel and Sam go out on a date and have their first kiss. So cute. So yeah, so that night ends up on a high for both of them. And it was really kind of cool seeing that because we've seen Johnny kind of down in the dump. So it was kind of nice to see him uh, feeling like he got something. With right? his empty something. briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. So that was that was cute. And then we see Daniel LaRusso teaching Miyagi Do Karate to his student Robbie. And so yeah, Robbie is Johnny's son. And so he's teaching him all the lessons he's learned as a kid. The all the wax on and the wax off and just all of them. They went, you know, they go through it um throughout the um episodes. And then I really loved it uh when he took him out to that beautiful serene uh, place by the lake uh -huh. um, where Robbie learns about balance within himself and also that powerful kick that Mr. Miyagi had taught Daniel, which is a whole body balance that, you know, frees up both legs for him to kick. And I just love that we see both Daniel and Johnny mentoring these young men, Robbie and Miguel. And but we also get to see Miguel's influence on Johnny along the way. I mean, he pushes him to like fight against the ban. And I've seen him like encourage him on things. So I think that for them, it's sort of a two way street, which I really appreciate. Yep. I love that part too of their relationship. I love that. Yeah. And then throughout the season, what I notice is that everybody has misunderstandings. And it's interesting how the effects of those insecurities affect other people. So Miguel is drunk and he misinterprets Sam and Robbie's relationship. And then he accidentally knocks Sam down. And then she gets so upset with him and his attitude that she says she's not going to the tournament. And then Robbie goes to tell Daniel that he is Johnny's son, but not before Johnny sees him. And then he thinks Daniel has conspired to train you know, his son and pushes him. And it's just a mess because, again, everybody's just doesn't know the whole story and they think, you know, the worst. And then Daniel tells Robbie to not return. So you're like, oh, my God, everybody just calm down. Just calm down. I know. That's so sad. I didn't I don't know that part. Yeah, I think the Daniel and Johnny tension every time I they get, you know, maybe an opportunity to to just be cordial or, you know, Mend not their relationship. angry at each other. This right. Something happens. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. So then in episode 10, it's the All Valley Tournament, and which is the big day. Um, this was a really good showdown. Everyone is there. We see Miguel, Hawk aka Eli, and Aisha fight for Cobra Kai. And we see Robbie fight as unaffiliated until the last match when he 
um, is fighting for Miyagi Do, which was really cool. But I just loved the choreography and watching all the matches. We see Eli, who was bullied in the beginning of the show, at, and he has emerged as a bully. So he's taking all the teachings of Cobra Kai to heart, like strike first, strike hard, and no mercy. And then he gets disqualified, and Chani asks him, you know, what he is doing, and Eli says, not being a pussy, which is exactly what Johnny taught him. And so Johnny is now realizing impact of all of that. Um, but one of the highlights to me in the match when was Robbie when Robbie kept getting up, you know, after being knocked down and he was still fighting even though he was injured. And just like Daniel did uh, back in the movies. And so when he's fighting with one arm and he's fighting Miguel in the last match, he uses the one-handed upside down kick, the Miyagi kick, and scores a point and the crowd cheers and I just loved it. I loved it. I, I, I think it was in slow motion when we saw that. Uh -huh. So I th thought that that was such a cool moment, even though he didn't win. It was just, it was good. I, I thought that it, uh, that the tournament ended really well. And then it was surprising to see that Johnny gets a visitor at the very end of the episode. And it's Crease. Because uh, he shows up, even though we all thought he was dead. Yeah. Then they get into that big uh, fight in the dojo of Cobra Kai. And I thought he was going to burn the place down with the cigar that flicked into the trash can. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So that was crazy that he just reappeared like that. It was a good... It was a good ending. Now, I thought that remember, was a cliffhanger yeah. for sure. Yeah, because when I saw it, that was the end that I had seen because I had to wait a whole year till I got to watch it again. So I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Grease is back. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. So uh, in season two, episode one through five, uh, I'll break that down. After winning the tournament, we see how Johnny is handling that win. And he's questioned his training philosophy uh, with his students, you know, the no mercy, right? Because that was his son, Robbie, that Miguel right. um, had uh, defeated. So um, that has got to be really emotional for Johnny and Robbie. I mean, when I saw each other at the end and he tried to speak to him, I can see the sincerity in Robbie's heart. Uh, and Johnny as well. Just, you know. Right. He, that's not what he was coaching the kids to be doing at the tournament specifically. Like, he, you know, uh, because he remembered what it was like for him. And I think that was a really good uh, awakening to just be at the tournament, you know, and to be in Crease shoes to train his team however he uh sees fit and so it was good to see that he really wanted to change cobra kai at that point um yeah so their relationship is tested and i feel like that was a good start for them i mean even when they saw each other at home depot with daniel um, you know <laughs> yeah and uh i thought that was i thought that they, that was gonna be like the gateway you know just them uh, starting their life together again, maybe. Um, I was really sorry to see that Robbie has such a neglectful mother. Um, I mean, we saw some of what she did in season one, bringing home men and, and just him kind of down the wrong path. But for her to come home while there's like zero food in the house, the bills have not been paid, and she brings home some guy packing to go leave for Cabo. I mean, really, what's going on? I know. You know, that's mm -hmm. just totally mm -hmm. immoral and completely illegal for her to be doing those sort of things. Um, so uh, was not surprised to see Daniel take him in uh, under his wing and have him live at their home was not surprised to see that at all. I mean, that's a student he cares for. I was nervous about Daniel's daughter 
Sam yeah. and Robbie being yeah. there. I was like, oh, no, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> um, especially because she's like, you know, not talking to Miguel. Right. Um, so then Johnny was tested again because of Kreese coming back, but then different emotions were coming up because of that. And I really thought that Johnny was conflicted. Kreese was a father figure to Johnny uh, in his uh, while he was a Cobra Kai student, but then he tried to kill him at the tournament, you know, because uh, he lost. And that was like 30 years ago, but uh, he wants nothing to do with that type of training. So I just think that he's really having a difficult time accepting Crease back into his life. And where yeah. Johnny uh, became interested in Miguel's mom, and then he had that sort of uh, wet dream, you know, where she's all eighties and, uh, with the lingerie and the coors. Like I, I thought that was so, so funny, uh, to see that. And I thought that was really sweet that they, he had a crush on her and, uh, you know, he was willing to protect her, uh, from that, uh, European man that was just using her. Yes. Um, and I was like, Oh good. He's in the right place at the right time. And so he was able to defend her. Um, but there was so much drama, so much drama. I mean, the teenagers have love triangles. They have friendship issues. Uh, you know, they're becoming these two rival karate gangs. Uh, the adults have marital issues, you know, because Daniel's working yeah. with the dojo and then his wife is picking up the business. They've lo they're losing employees. Um, and then they're... Yeah, and then there's, there's the long-time high school rival issue that we just have not seen, that have not seemed to really improve. Once you see Johnny and Daniel, you know, have potential to bury that hatchet, something ruins it. So then Kreese rising yeah. from the dead had a huge impact on that and the season as well. So it just was well done, in my opinion, and I just absolutely loved every bit of it. Yeah. Ah, I know. It's so good. It's so true. All those issues everybody's having. So I really like that um, part where they're in the mall and um, Eli catches up with Dimitri and he starts chasing him. And then Robbie and Sam step in and fight as we see flashbacks of their training on that wheel that Danny had them doing over and over again, and they couldn't figure out why, how it was ever going to play an important role in what they ever did in life, because they were balancing. And he was saying, you know, you have to be able to, you know, feel the other one. And so they did that because they were back to back and they were able to fight off all these Cobra Kai uh, people. And I Honestly, and I'm not kidding, I got chills when they were doing it because they would flash back to them on that wheel and then showing what they learned. That's what I truly love. I love it when something you work hard at pays off. Yeah. And so it was so, I thought that, that was so cool. Exactly. And then in uh, episode six through 10, um, I thought it was really fun to watch Johnny reunite with his old Cobra Kai buddies. And they're from the original movie. I love that they brought these guys back. And, um, you know, but they have to remind him that Kreese is a bad dude. And they reminisce and they get to show off their karate moves because they get in a, you know, brawl at the bar and um but there is tommy is dying and he does give johnny you know some advice he says you know you have something i don't which is time so basically go live the right way and you know atone for anything any mistakes you may have made so i hoping that that was pivotal and i th i think it was in johnny's um life for him so, and it was sad because Tommy ends up dying and, uh, and, you know, they showed that part and it was just sad. I know. Um, but throughout the episode, you also see Crease's influence, how it grows within the dojo and how Johnny keeps pushing for the boys to have honor when they fight. But I, to me, it seems like Eli and Tori have gone to the dark side. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, they're just, you know, they... They know what they want. They're never wavering. 
Um, and then Daniel realized that he has to prepare Miyagi-Do in case there is a fight. So he uses, you know, the elements, uh, the, the hot and the cold to show them some techniques. And it was fun to finally see Dimitri make some headway. Um, and then Sam and Robbie's bond grows closer and eventually they kiss. And they keep kissing. I know, right? Like, I know. They just don't stop kissing. <laughs> I kept thinking they were going to get caught. I, yeah, I, I was too. And then get in trouble. That's why I thought, yeah. like, oh my God, oh God. I mean, they would kiss by the refrigerator and oh kiss gosh. out in the training. Oh my and gosh. Kiss here. And they're like, no. Kissing, kissing, kissing. <laughs> I'm like, Daniel's going to blow his top. Because he yeah. is protective of his daughter, so. Oh, yeah. And then, like you said, you had brought up, I, okay, it is one of my favorite moments is when season, uh, or or not season, episode eight opens up and Johnny goes to Carmen's door and he kisses her and you're like, what? And then you yes. hear the song, Here I Go Again by Whitesnake. And I just knew it was Johnny's fantasy. And then, of course, it gets like, you know, more like a... a uh, music video and yes. it was cracking me up so bad because like you said she has the beer pouring down her and she's all sexy and her hair is blowing and and it's just crazy i was like cringing and hiding my face in the i don't know nobody was in the room but i kept i was so embarrassed i don't know why i'm like no Johnny. that was so funny i'm like you're hysterical That's and then so you funny. see him wake you not wake up you see him like sleeping and of course now you know it truly is a dream and he's got the biggest smile on his face but um, I went and looked up the song because I, I just wanted to, because that's just me, right? A song gets stuck in my head and I went and uh, looked it up. Do you know that that song has like 84 million views on YouTube? How cool. And that people on there were saying, are you here because of Cobra Kai? I Don't say that you're not. And they're like, Carmen is hot. <laughs> it was just oh, so funny. funny. And it's I, I just thought that that was hysterical. So that's other people, cute. yeah, other people were on uh, looking at that music video also. But yes, we see the rivalries intensify between Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai. And uh, drunk Sam kisses Miguel and Tori sees it and she like blows a gasket. Yeah. Whew. So they were already getting heated though at that party with that um like drinking competition that oh, they were yes. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like on one foot, I think, right? Yes. Or, yeah. That's got to be really hard to do. I yes. can't even stand on one foot like Not drunk? sober <laughs> on the ground, let yeah. alone a chair or whatever they were on. <laughs> I know. And Tori is vicious. She's pretty vicious. Yeah. She's already, yeah, she took she took Sam out at the country club. She pushed her over the table with all the desserts on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, she definitely uh, no mercy, that's for sure. And then the roller skating. When oh, roller yeah, skating. strike first. Yeah. yeah. So, in episode 10, uh, you know, Sam doesn't come home, so the LaRussos are looking for her, and Daniel figures out, you know, through her iPhone that she's uh, in Reseda. And so he ends up finding her at Johnny's and he's totally pissed and tries to, you know, knock down the door. And, you know, Johnny's telling him to calm down. Of course, you don't tell a father to calm down. right? I thought they both did not handle this well at all. I thought, you know, Johnny should have realized this is his daughter, you know, but then at the same time, I thought, Daniel got so mad. I I feel like he lashed out at Robbie when he shouldn't have. I can understand him lashing out at Johnny. He's a grown adult, but I was I was sad for Robbie because he was a kid just trying to look out for Sam. He didn't do, you know, anything wrong. So the next day, it's the first day of school, and Tori is hunting down Sam and she finds her and she starts this fight, and we see so many amazing choreographed 
fights. It goes from one part of the school to the other, and each rivalry is addressed, which is deeply satisfying until the last one. Dimitri throws Eli into a into the glass. Tori is about to punch Sam in the face with a spiky bracelet, but Sam gets the upper hand and throws her down. And then Robbie and Miguel fight, and Miguel is winning, but he has, you know, this flashback of Johnny telling him to have honor. And so he walks away, but Robbie gets up and kicks him and knocks him over the rail. And we see Miguel fall in slow motion. Oh, my God. I, I just see his arms, you know, flailing and he hits his spine on the railing. And it was so awful, so awful. And everybody stops and is in shock. And uh, yeah, I mean, Miguel could be paralyzed or die, right? I mean, we don't know what his condition is like. And so Sam yells at Robbie, what did you do? And that's the last we see of Robbie. Yeah. And everyone else is blaming Johnny at this point, right? And Johnny is down. He's upset. I mean, Carmen doesn't want to see him and doesn't want her to see his kid. And and all that happens with Crease. He takes over the dojo. Oh, my God. So much happens. And it is a major cliffhanger. Oh, so crazy. So crazy. The song, though, uh, when that episode started, you know, the cruel summer, um, the original song by the Bananarama yeah. was playing. And that circa back to the original movie of Karate Kid when he yeah. first went to school. And then at the end of that episode was the remake, the cover song by Carrie Kimmel. And that was just beautiful. The, we've been, we were, we've been singing that song ever since, Aww, you know, we just, yeah. it's, it was the perfect song for that episode and the influence and the impact and poor Miguel. I really hope that Miguel's going to be okay. I'm really terrified about what will happen to both of them and uh, Miguel and Robbie. Uh, Johnny, you know, he is going down on a whole other path. His car, he, his cool car with the Cobra Kai logo on it. He just abandons it. He threw his cell phone. Yeah. Um, He's drinking. He, he lost his business. I, you know, Crease is now the owner of the dojo while he was away. He was a snake in the grass and he uh, stole the dojo <laughs> with the landlord. And I like that snake in the grass. Yeah, that was part of the show. Um, and it, it's just, he's just scummy, you know, he just... I can't believe how manipulative and how he played Johnny the way that he did. Yeah. I'm just so mad at Crease. Mm -hmm. I'm like so disgusted with that. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, I have a lot of fears and anxiety for all the characters and I'm just really sad. I'm devastated about that last episode. I, I agree. Totally agree. And then, you know what? I feel bad for Robbie. I do because he didn't, he wasn't trying to hurt uh, Miguel at that part. He was just fighting him. I, I really don't think his intention was to push him over the rail. It's just that that's what happened. And, uh, and the fact that his father didn't look for him or go find him or... I don't know. I, I And I know there's a reason for that because it would, you know, we had to leave it at a cliffhanger. But, you know, here, uh, Daniel was his mentor and he's not happy with him. And now Johnny's not happy with him and his mother's off at rehab. And it's like, who does he have? What's going to happen to him? So I felt really bad for so many people um, in this cliffhanger. I, I I don't know. Um, but you know what? I was also curious about Allie because she she responded to because, you know, we see Johnny throw his phone and uh, then you see his phone in the sand and it says, Allie accepted your friend request. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God. So we don't know where that's going to lead. Right. And there's been rumors that she's going to come in season three, which would be so cool. And That'd then, be awesome. 
Yeah. And then I just wanted to bring up Amanda, uh, Daniel's wife. I wanted to say that I think she's great. I mean, there was a couple of times where she kind of put her foot down with Daniel and I get it. I totally get it. But I didn't want him to quit doing his Miyagi-Do, but I understood why she, you know, because she has to run a business and everything. But what I liked about her is that she kept trying to uh, unite Johnny and Daniel. It wasn't like, oh, no, he's my husband and he's a jerk. No, she would say, no, get him a car. You know, this happened to him. And no, don't fight by the pool. You're going to get blood all over the place. Come in and have breakfast. I mean, I and then when they sat down for that Mexican dinner all together, I don't know. I just felt like she's always trying to repair and help. So I really like her. I think she's a good, they made her a great wife. They didn't make her a typical woman that's just filling space and being a wife. I feel like she really has a personality and I really appreciate that. That the writer's problem solver thought, you know, uh, and they made her smart. You know, they made her able to run a business and sell. So I really like that. And um and then we've talked a little bit about Sam and Tori's relationship and uh, we'll see how that plays out. But I'm hoping that somehow um, that Johnny and Daniel will work together to defeat a bigger threat. That's what I, that would be just so cool to me, even if it's temporary. It's like, oh, my God, to see you guys really like fight back to back with each other. I think that would be so darn cool. I would just love it. Yeah. And I'm not sure what's going to happen between Miguel, Sam and Robbie, because that is a because I like Miguel and Sam, but then I also like Sam and Robbie. So I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. So hmm, it's very interesting. Yep. I look forward to it. Very yep. excited. <sighs> Oh, such a good show. So uh, hopefully you've watched this because otherwise we've spoiled everything for you. But uh, if you haven't, just go back and watch it again. I mean, I've watched it several times and I still love it. It doesn't matter that I know what's happening or that I've seen it. So go watch it on Netflix. Go watch the original Karate Kid movies. They're just great. Yes, they are. I agree. Thank okay. you, Diana. Oh, thank you. So, Brooke, <laughs> have you had time to watch anything else? Uh, I don't have a lot of time to sit down and, and watch a whole lot. Uh, but I'll dedicate time to certain shows like Cobra Kai, Walking Dead, you know, just certain things that I really want to see. Um, and right now I'm watching, while I work at night, I'm watching Outlander. And yeah. that's on Netflix. And uh, some of you may have heard of the show, but it's basically this woman from 1940 who uh, travels from uh, 1940 to, she travels through time to 17, like around 1740. And this is England and Scotland. And so she knows a lot about history and there's like a major war that she knows uh, is coming and the Scots uh, will be defeated uh, between England and Scotland. And so she's stuck in time because she touches these stones and she's married in 1940, but then she, um, uh, I don't know if I should spoil the show, but she, she ends up making a life in 1700s. And so I was really surprised to see the adaptation in one season, but I'm on season two now and, uh, the love interest, I'm, I just watched the episode last night. I was like all excited to have my midnight snack. (laughs) And then I totally lost my appetite. I was like, Oh my gosh, this poor person in this episode just got totally, it was horrible. I couldn't even eat. I was like, Oh, this is the episode that I've been hearing about. One of my friends, she told me about what was to happen eventually. And I was like, oh, it's okay. You just spoiled like a huge piece of this season. But I think that I'm going to go ahead and forget that. No, I didn't forget. And then I was like, oh, crap. It's this episode. Dang it. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's really good. It's beautiful. The scenery is gorgeous. I want to travel there. It's like yeah. somewhere that I've always wanted to go since I was a kid. I've always been into the uh, English 
uh, culture and Scotland. So I don't know why. I think maybe a past life or something. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really good. the The main character, she's beautiful. She does so well. Um, so I'm watching that at night while I work, and then uh, with the family, we're re- we are rewatching the Mandalorian because the new season's coming out soon. And I just love The Mandalorian uh, so much. And that's on Disney+. Plus. It's a Star Wars story of the basically a bounty hunter um, in the Star Wars universe. Uh, so we're watching that with the kids again. And then the movie that I rented that I was talking about earlier in the podcast was Mulan. And that we watched on Disney+. Plus. We rented it on Disney+. Plus. But the payment came out of my Google play for some reason. I don't know. It was just like somehow connected, uh, as far as payment goes. So it was like 29 99 to watch Mulan and that's on Disney plus. And if you don't know what Mulan is, it's a original was an animation Disney movie. And Mulan is, um, a female character played by Liu, I don't even, I didn't look up how to pronunciate their names, but um, it looks like Liu uh, Yifei, and she's the main character who plays Mulan, and then there's also starring Donnie Yen, Jet Li, Gong Li, and many more all-star actors in the cast. I was just blown away at the, the way that the story was told. Mulan is a fearless young woman who joins the Imperial Army in her father's place. Then the issue is that she's a woman posing as a man and women are not allowed to serve uh, in the army in that way. So she, it was pretty cute because, you know, she like has to be bunked in with all these men and they're showering, but she's not. And then they're like, Ooh, you stink. Go take a shower. What is wrong? With, you know? And it was really cute. She was um, a beautiful character. She played the, male role really well she was very strong there were a lot of other elements that were not in the original animation so there is some controversy about that but i feel like there always can be controversy in a remake so i just think for us we were very pleased at this movie awesome Um, and i recommend it yeah I would like uh, to see it. Sounds like a yeah. good. Or it, it, the trailer seemed like something that was exciting to watch. So. Oh, I think you would enjoy it. I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, since we can't go to the movies and spend, you know, a hundred dollars at the movie theater with popcorn, soda, candy, and all the tickets, <laughs> thirty bucks at home. Yeah. It's like you, you know, you're you're good. Um, and then I finally watched the movie Ben is Back, which you recommended probably like a year ago. Yeah. Um, but I finally watched it. That's with Julia Roberts. And I forget the, the, the young actor's name in it, but um, she's a struggle. You know, she has a, a son who is uh, struggling with uh, substance abuse and he comes back from rehab and it's just like a total shock. And it's Christmas and she's just so determined and she's they're going through so much pain. And I'm like, man, I don't even know the last time I stayed up all night like that. But, you know, if your kid is out there and in trouble, you'll do anything right. for your child. Yeah. And so I thought it was really intense to watch really intense she did such a good job and the ending that cliffhanger ending like you know that the ending may have been a good but you just i don't know those type of endings really i'm just like oh now what it's over (laughs) yeah (laughs) so that's what i watched recently oh thank you what about you yeah you're welcome so i have been watching many many things seasons of things so i did watch yellowstone at your recommendation i saw the two seasons i haven't been able to see the third season because i watched it on peacock i really liked it a lot with kevin costner um owning a montana ranch and just all the you know stuff that goes with owning a ranch and fighting with other people. And it's really good. It's very good. Um, I also saw True Blood and I know I'm behind because that was, you know, ended a long time ago, but there were seven seasons. I, I was totally 
hooked. I stayed up so late. I loved True Blood. For anyone that doesn't know who True Blood is, it's about vampires drinking synthesized blood to to live amongst humans. And and so it's it's just, it's really good. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It's on HBO. Um, and, you know, great actors are in that. Um, I'm also currently watching Hannibal. That's on Netflix. It's extremely dark. But uh, my son kept texting me, Mom, are you watching this? Are you watching this? You better watch it. It's a psychological thriller. And, you know, Hannibal is based on Hannibal Lecter, who was in Silence of the Lambs and Red Dragon and all of that. So and it is pretty gruesome. But if you like crime and psychological thrillers and you can take um, gore. (laughs) <laughs> then you'll like this movie or this cool. movie, this pr- this program. Uh, there's only three seasons right now. Um, I'm watching The Office. I know I'm behind the times on that, but this is what I figured during the summer. I can catch up on these things that I haven't been watching. I'm on season three, so I'm slowly watching it along with everything else. I'm enjoying it. I, I'm getting all the memes now. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. Yeah. So, I'm in the middle of Umbrella Academy. I'm on season two, and I'm enjoying that also. And as far as movies, I watched Logan Lucky, Brooke, because you had recommended it a while ago. And um, that's on Prime. It's a good comedy uh, drama with Adam Driver and Channing Tatum. So it's really good. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I saw I See You. This is on Prime. It's a really good thriller with a twist. And this is with Helen Hunt. So I liked that. Um, I also saw Overlord. And um, I cannot remember exactly what I saw it on. But you you go into it thinking that it's going to be a um, movie about World War II, which it is. But it goes to show what uh, the Germans are doing and about uh, the undead. And there's all this other stuff going on besides the war. So that's really interesting. And um, other recommendations are listed on our website blog. So you can go to screensandfocus.wixsite.com slash screensandfocus to get uh, these movies. I'll post them and also their other list of movies. I also just... This week saw Paris Hilton's documentary on YouTube, and I found it very informative. There were things that I didn't know about her, this whole um, simple life and everything, how much of a persona it is, how hard she works, how smart she really is. Um, And, you know, I, I feel like everybody should watch it because I feel like people think they know people just because they see their pictures or their movies or or them on social media. But you really don't know what people are living through. Um, and so I think that if you'll watch, if you watch this, you'll have an understanding of who may be a part of who she really is. I also saw the live table read of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Have you heard about this, Brooke? I don't think so. Okay. So they got a group of actors, like huge actors to do this table read. And so it's like a Zoom set up like in a Zoom and everybody's reading through Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And it's so funny and interesting because Morgan Freeman is the narrator and they have uh, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt and um, Julia Roberts and John Legend and um, Shia LaBeouf and uh, I think it's Henry Golding I believe is his name and oh my God I'm 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 sorry but I'm not going to mention everybody's name but you should watch it it's so entertaining to watch it Shia LaBeouf blew me away uh, Sean Penn is in it also because this all benefits uh, Sean. Penn had started uh, CORE, which is helping with COVID, fundraising for COVID. And he does a lot of... um, He's a philanthropist. Yes. He he is... um, I love him. I was listening to a podcast. He is... I I just think he's doing the greatest thing. That's what people should do, right? I mean, uh, yes, be an actor and express yourself. But also when you have a lot of money and and you're able to give back in the way that he is, it just makes me appreciate him so much more. So to do to, you know, to fundraise for core, all these actors got together to um, do this table read. And of course, Brad Pitt plays Brad, which is Judge Reinhold, right? And 
Jennifer Aniston plays Phoebe Cates' role in The Red Bikini. And so everybody was entertained when they heard them read against each other because... You know, if you saw Fast Times at Ridgemont High, you know it happens. And what's so funny is that Morgan Freeman is narrating parts of this, and it's just very graphic. And it's like, oh, my God. So it's just a fun, entertaining, it's like an hour's worth of listening to these actors do this. But I just found uh, Julia Roberts so such a darling in this. Um, And Shia LaBeouf blew everybody away, even because he played Spicoli. And he was blowing Sean Penn away. Sean Penn was laughing and enjoying it so much. So if you have the time, you could go find that on Facebook. And I think it's on YouTube also. Cute. That's what I've been watching. Wow. Good job, Diana. Thank you for your recommendations. <laughs> thank you, Brooke, for yours. And thank you for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in, and we hope something we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity, or inspiration. Please subscribe to our podcast and tell a friend. We would love more members of our TV club. If you could do us a big favor and rate and review the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, we need your feedback. I want to thank those that have left us a comment. We've seen the recent comments and we really appreciate you so much. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Yay. We'll also be uploading new episodes in a couple of weeks. The next shows will be on The Walking Dead, Season 10, Episode 16, and the new Walking Dead series, Season 1, Episode 1. You can find our website listed in our show notes. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.